Welcome back to Grace Online. I'm Pastor Lachey. And I'm Eva Lachey. And uh, we're your hosts for uh, All Things Relationship. Actually, this is the last of four um, discussions that we've had on relationships, but it's not the, be not the end of a relationship discussion. In fact, um, we are beginning a series, or we have a series of talks with couples, married or single and seriously dating, or people just exploring, you know, the intimacy of marriage relationships and, and serious relationships. So we want to uh, make sure that you know a little bit about that. That's going to be available for people to do in person. It's going to be person. in person here at Grace. Here at here Grace. Grace. And that's coming really, really soon. But over the last couple of weeks, we've been spending some time talking about relationships. We laid the foundation of relationships being interactive, right. relationships. Um, what were some of the other things that we talked about? Uh, about relationship being, as far as it's really about connection. And so not necessarily always a relationship between um, two individuals that are in a romantic relationship, but just relationship with people, mm -hmm. period. And so that's kind of what we talked about over the few weeks. Sure. I think that the foundation also um, was laid in speaking that God has relationship with humanity. Right. That God's desire was for us to replicate his love for us toward one another. And that's in husband and wife or mother and child or father, father and, child. and child or brother and sister or child to parent. So there's so many dynamics of human relationships that if we are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, right. we could have success in those areas. What does a successful relationship look like? A successful relation. Us? No. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I knew that you were going to say that. Well, you told me to right here. You said, oh, no, right. I'm, just I'm just kidding. No. So it, obedience is part of that then, right? You <laughs> <laughs> uh, always wait till we start recording <laughs> to throw some of those because you know that I'm not going to respond with hey. my first thought. <laughs> I'm good. Oh, yes, I'm good. Sir. Whatever you like. Whatever yeah, okay, you say. right. Yeah, no. Our ratings just went up. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. No, um, ex success in a relationship, I believe, whether regardless to the dynamics, whether it's husband or wife, brother mm -hmm. and sister, man or you know, man and you know, man and woman, um, or friends. coworkers, Co friends, yeah, boss, su employee. Right. Success determines really kind of like what you were um, preaching on Sunday. See, you put that little zinger there. That our whole, that the whole being of who we are is for us to love God with all our, all our heart, all our soul, all our mind. But, the, but in addition to that, the greatest commandment is for us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that is what success is in a relationship. Yeah. It's so it's not just a marriage it. that goes well or, you know, two booze and a friend. Right. You know, it's, it's definitely... God centered. It is. And it's loving your neighbor as yourself. Um, when, and we'll probably jump into this, but I don't know if you recall that there's so, there has to be dozens and dozens of um, couples that we have talked to, um, whether they were in a, a, a dating relationship or in a marriage relationship. And there's always going to be challenge. As long as you are human beings, there's always going to be challenge. Yeah. But would you say that? One of the challenges is that we do not hold fast to that commandment of loving others as we love ourselves. I me, as far as showing the love of God. And for every um, challenge that um, we have encountered, we have nine times out of ten, you know, I had to throw a number in there. Um, we've always been able to trace it back to it's not the institution of marriage or the institution of um, parenthood or the institution of friendship is usually two individual person having challenges within themselves that they probably need to work out and get whole. Not necessarily so even with be, each other. Even with each other so that they can have a better relationship sure. with each other. So often the challenge in marriages is really a fight that you have within yourself and it's just showing up in the relationship with the other person. This is good. We're going to get into that. Um, you made reference to um, two passages of scripture or a passage of scripture mm -hmm. that is mentioned twice in the Bible. In Deuteronomy, um, the Lord, of course, gives commandment unto the children of Israel. And in this commandment, he says, you know, the first foremost is to have no other God before him, but to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then um, Jesus says this in Matthew to his disciples when they talk about, um, when he talks about what it means to be in a relationship with God. I really believe that the entire discussion around mm -hmm. relationship 
has an epicenter and that epicenter is getting right with God. That is so true. It's not going to church. It's not just doing, you know, benevolence to the community or serving on the, you know, the usher board or, you know, doing whatever. It, it really has to do with an individual being in a dynamic with God that makes them appealing right. in the dynamic with others. Because if I'm not a man of God, I'm surely not going to be a good man to you. If you're not a woman of God, you won't be a good woman to me as husband and wife. Right. If we were friends, say we were simply friends, co-workers and right. platonic friends, we wouldn't be able to maintain the dynamic of getting along, agreeing, and being peaceable with one another if there's no God factor. That is true. And it's because our origin, we were made in the image of God and in after his own likeness, and God doesn't have conflict with himself. No, he doesn't. <laughs> God is not in conflict with himself. He's not, he's not somehow torn between whether or not he's going to like his creation today right. and hate it tomorrow. Or, you know, just as a husband has to decide whether he's going to love his wife like the commandment in the book of Ephesians is, or a woman is going to partner with her husband that the goals, the dreams, the assignments right. that they have are executed. There's so many layers to this, but I want to simplify it. Let's right. simplify right. it. There and was also a, gotta, you got to qualify. Sure. Qualify, because when you mention conflict, there's going to be disagreements. There's yeah. going to be, um, there's going to be conflict, but you're talking about conflict in the sense that it tears down the other person. Yeah. You're not talking about the fact that you didn't see eye to eye because that just happens in all relationships. Yeah. That there are some things that there are going to be disagreements. The disagreements or the conflict is not what the challenge is. The challenge is your response to it True. and how we treat one another in the midst of that. So I just want to clarify that because I don't want anybody to think that, oh, they're, they're saying no one ever have conflict. And we're definitely not oh, no, saying no, no. that. No, no, no. We can have conflict right. and still achieve goals. We can have conflict right. and still be productive. We can have conflict. In fact, Conflict has existed since the beginning of time. When there was darkness and void all right. over the earth, the conflict was that God said, let there be light, and boom, there was light, and it drove out the darkness. So that's conflict right there. Right. Inertia is conflict right. or the movement of things. But one of the things that I think is important is that we have a, a working definition of relationship. Yes. That the working definition would be interaction between two or more people right. striving to accomplish a goal. Now, I didn't just make that up. I did some research on, on relationship definitions, but I think that's a kind of a hodgepodge of many different right. definitions because whether we're husband and wife, whether we're brother and sister, whether we're coworkers, business partners, friendship. you know, friendship, members in, in a church, or in neighbors. church leadership, <laughs> neighbors, because um, neighbors is a, is a right. very vast right. word. Right. Everybody can be our neighbor. Um, we have to have an understanding that God wants to relate to us he does. and through, through us. us. So right. relationship is God relating to us and through us for the dynamic of getting something done. So what can relationships accomplish? We can look at a couple of um, relationships in the Bible. What can relationships accomplish when they are working and operating, functioning properly? Um, I think um, I can use an example as far as with, with us. I believe that we have accomplished what God has set out as an assignment on our life. Um, to serve, you know, God's people in the area of leadership, you know, in the church. So I think you've even said this many a times that God called you to pastor, but you know that he called our family together along with you to accomplish the goal of what God um, has set out. And so I think sometimes people think that they can go at it alone, whereas I believe that um, when you work together, two are better than one. And so when you work together, you'll be able to fulfill whatever it is that God has <clears throat> called you to do. Sure. And so um, it's really to manifest God's love in the earth. And so in order to, to show God's love, in order to be an example of God's love, I have to be in a relationship with you or someone else to actually show that. Yeah, there's so many scriptures that come to mind. One of them is that, <coughs> excuse me, that no man's an island. Right. No one lives into himself and no one dies into himself. If we live or we die, we're the Lord's. Right. And that scripture is speaking about um, the autonomy of our assignments, but it also means that it's contingent upon working together. The assembling of ourselves together, for example, as a body of believers, that's a relationship or a dynamic that cannot be executed properly if people don't come along. Come along. So let's look at the relationship between um, Moses and the children of Israel. Uh, Moses had an assignment to lead the children of Israel out of bondage 
that mm. was in Egypt for many, many, many years. And it wasn't that he woke up one day and decided that he wanted to be elected president of the Israelite people. In fact, they were not even a nation, right. which means that they were a group of people that needed relationship with leadership in order to get relationship with God. Right. And so we find that that is similarly the case in the dynamics of people being able to just get along to get the job done whether it's in church, whether it's at work. So mastering the, the ability, I don't even want to say the art, because it's not right. something that you have to perfect through some type of comparison or skill set, but the ability. We have the capacity to relate to one another. We do. We have the capacity. The Bible says that we love him because he first loved us. Right. So that means that our capacity to love and our capacity to share love, give love, and be love is based on what God already put inside of us. Right. Try that connection between love and the accomplishment of of relationship assignments right it, it really goes again it goes back to god's word our relationship assignments what god has have us to do no matter what we do we have to do it through the element of love because when you, the, in first corinthians when it talks about you know we can have uh no matter what it is that we do, if we don't do it through love, we are a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal, which really, bottom line, just means it's all in vain. Or we're making noise. Or we're just making noise and, and going nowhere. So whatever it is that God has called us to do, whether it's on our job, whether it's being a wife, whether it's being a husband, whether it's being a child, being a brother, being a sister, if the element of love does not envelop that, then we are not fulfilling a successful relationship. And so when you say, well, what do I mean by the element of love? By those definitions and those adjectives that God tells us, he tells us what love is, and he tells us what love is not. He tells us that love is patient, that love is kind, that it's not easily provoked, and it doesn't behave itself unseemly. And so for some reason, I'm out sharing this with you. I have all these relationships with exactly. people I know that are flashing <laughs> through my mind. And their conflict is the, based the, on the, the absence of love. Right, and it's right, and it, it doesn't reflect that. I can even think of, you know, we've been married 35, 36 years. Forever. 30, forever. That's not forever. <laughs> We've forever. been married a long time, and I can even—I can't think, even remember not being married. That's how—that's how, that's how that's, great it that's has been. That's true. <laughs> I can, even, I can even think of some times that maybe we were at odds with one another, but if you pull everything back, there was an absence of God's love there, or not that we didn't love each other, and not that we didn't love God, but we at that particular point were not manifesting the patience or the kindness. Or Which not is a self-generated fruit, yes, meaning there was no love inside easily, of me. Right, or right, you, or, right, you or me, yeah. or, or love being easily provoked, and I think that how, the thing that I love about God is when conflicts come or when challenges come, he gives us the appropriate response. We have to do it, and this is the key. We have to make the choice to respond the way God has told us to. And, that's and the, the choice thing. has to be obedience. And, exactly, and that's yeah. what the, and that, in that choice, that's what love is. Love is a choice. It's not a feeling, even though you can feel love, but it is a choice and it's a decision that you make. Like when, when God loved us, when he gave his son, that was a decision that he made. And that's the same thing with us between relationships, regardless to the definition of the relationship, is we have to decide and we have to make a choice, even in hard times, to show love. It's yeah. easy to love somebody when you're getting along, but when you know that it's true love and you really love them, is when you love them even in spite of, sure. of, of conflict or in spite of not seeing it. And if, and that's a mature love. Well, even though love is reciprocal, meaning you give and receive, some people think that love is a precipitor, meaning that if you love me first, I love you back. Right. Or if somebody loves me, then I love them. That's not, as I opposed love you to, regardless. We were talking the other night, yeah. and I, I asked you this, this question. I said, have you noticed that our love with one another has such a sobriety to it? And so I think there are levels to where there's a deepness that comes, you know, with love. And some of mm -hmm. that, it only comes through time, just yeah. like the relationship that, you know, we have with God. I love him even more than when I first gave my life to him. Sure. But that's only because I know him even more. Like he's known me, period, you know, who I was, is, and will be. But with God, over the years, I've learned to know him more and that allowed me to love him more. And that's how relationships should be. Well, I'm gonna share some of your favorite scripture. Um, one of them in particular is um, perfect love cast out fear because oh, yeah, fear have torment. Yeah. What made me think about that is you, <clears throat> excuse me, you spoke of the maturity 
mm -hmm. that comes, or the sobriety right. that comes with love over time, or love through time, or love in time. Right. And notice I use through, over, and in because regardless, time is moving. Right. And if we're not growing in the love, or it's not magnifying in our lives, we'll be deficient. So if I love me like I loved me at 12 years old, and now I'm much older than that in a marriage relationship, as a husband, a parent, a pastor, a leader, a community professor, all those things, if my love is still 12 years old and at that immaturity, I'm gonna have a lot of conflicts and oh, none of my relationships are gonna work. Absolutely. So, so growing with my years on the earth is the depth, the sobriety, or right. the maturity of our love for God and our love for each other. So there are things that people do now that doesn't bother me in a relationship that bothered me before oh, because absolutely. now I'm older and I recognize that it's, it's not even worth the sweat. It, your tears, that is, Terrence, no, Terrence, that is so, that is so key. Cause I even think of us as we've grown in love and we've grown in our relationship. It's not so much that I've changed or that you've changed, but I think love is knowing yourself better as time goes and when you know yourself better and your relationship with God grows better <clears throat> a lot of things you won't be so easily um, taken by or easily irritated by or something that someone else does yeah. because God didn't put us on earth to control people he didn't put us on earth to we control barely control each, ourselves right he didn't put us on earth to control in a marriage relationship to control in a parental relationship, even in a parental relationship, that's supposed to be discipline and that's supposed to be discipling children to grow. It's not necessarily a and control honor. thing. It's an honor. And even in your in your work relationship, it's not a necessarily a control thing. So as you grow in love, as you learn more of who you are, other people and the things that they do, it don't bother you like it used to. And that's yeah. because you're growing in love and you're going to love them in spite of themselves. Mm. And so I think that's the that's another thing of success that we have to get to that point to where we love God so much and God has shown us who we are in him so much that regardless to what's going on in the other relationships that we come into encounter, the love that we have for ourselves will still able to show you love. Yeah, That's we... even to the point of when I think about, because um, I always have to put this caveat here, no one is to stay in a relationship, whether it's marital, or friendship, work relationship, that abuse is involved. Even with that, you love yourself enough to where you remove yourself out of that situation to be abused. So you didn't change the person, you just removed yourself out of the situation to where you love yourself too much to be abused. We're going to pray for some people in just a moment because we've only got a few minutes left. I think you've done a wonderful job of filling the space and time um, with content. It has been very, very enriching. Um, but I get to talk all the time, right? In these last four weeks or these last three weeks, we had an opportunity to cover a basic definition of relationship, but it really boils down to love. And we've right. emphasized that. I know that many people were probably thinking that this conversation about relationship is going to be centered around dating and courting and what to do and what not to do and the warm and fuzzies that come with it. Nah. Um, but I think we do mature for that now. That's um, the cherry on the top. That's the cherry on the top. Well, actually, we can talk about some of those things in the small group. Yes. But I do want to close with this, and, and I'd like for both of us to pray for those who are watching um, to be strengthened in their inner being. Yes. You know, we always say inner man, and that closes some people off because a woman says, I'm not a man or, you know, but the inner being, in your, in your innermost being to be strengthened, knowing the hope of your calling in Christ. That is the essential to using the key, love, yes. which is that key. Um, the essential to that is knowing who you are in Him and being rooted and grounded in His love. The thing about God's love is that it never changes. No matter what we do and no matter how we wiggle in and out of reality, He's still the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And his love is from everlasting to everlasting. And his relationship that he intended to have with us from the foundation of the world still stands. And so that message of truth will help us to embrace a better understanding of relationship and correlationship. You know, I correlate a key to a car to transportation to getting somewhere. Well, somebody else may correlate the key to the car to a note that they have to pay every month. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so understanding how... God uses the very simplistic things to get us to where it is that we need to be. Um, what are your closing words to 
the viewers or those who watch Grace online as it relates to relationships? I just want to encourage you to, as you're loving on God and getting to know God, ask Him to reveal yourself to you. And I guarantee you, as you continue to love yourself, you will love your neighbor, and then your relationships will be happy, healthy, and whole. And that's the key, to be a whole person. Amen. So you pray, and then I'll pray, and we'll be done for this particular broadcast. Yes, Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the love that you have shown um, to us, and we thank you the love that you're showing even through us. So give us the wisdom and give us the knowledge and the wherewithal to know who we are in you so that we'll be able to exude your love on others. And with that, we'll forever give you the praise and the honor and the glory in your precious son's name we pray. And Father, we do thank you for our time with you, with each other, and with your people. We thank you because you've entrusted us with just words of wisdom, life experiences, and even your word, your holy word. And as we've quoted scripture and as we shared revelation from your word, I pray that you would rewrite it in our hearts that we would not be in offense to what your plan is. I pray that the people who are receiving this understanding and wisdom would be enriched because of it and that our lives would be changed for the better. I come against the spirit of division, the spirit of divorce, the spirit of hatred, bitterness, racism, against those things that divide us, Father. I pray that your love would be uh, multiplied in those who are willing to serve as those vessels to be poured into and to pour out your love in the earth. It's the answer to everything, Father. And it's not weak, it's not something that is to be pushed over, but it's a force to be reckoned with because you loved us so much that you gave your son to die. And he loved us so much that he gave up his life willingly. And our love for you redeems us through our confession of faith and through our belief in you and the receiving of your love. So Father, bless somebody who's partaking in this study this discussion bless father the people who are in that place of decision and trying to figure it out and trying to understand what it really means to be in a relationship whether it's marriage or work or friendship or family whatever the dynamic is i pray father that your truth would prevail and that your word would be illuminated in Jesus' name we pray amen Listen, thank you so much for tuning in to Grace Online. It's always exciting to share the word, and I'm exceptionally excited to be able to break the bread of life with you. Well, thank you for the invitation. So next week, same place, same time? No? All right. Listen, we've got some other things in store for you, and we did mention the small group. Small group will have already started. The small group is already going um, by the time you're watching this, but I do want you to know that there are a lot of exciting things happening at Grace for the nation's church. So stay tuned, follow us on all of our social media platform. And as we always say here at Grace for the Nation's Church, we believe there is hope. God bless.